Even Christians who reject the theory of evolution by random mutation over billions of years don't actually reject evolution itself. They agree that one species can produce many other species, but by a much faster method than random mutation. Young Earth theories regard a global flood as the cause of worldwide geological upheaval. This means that all land animals are descended from those who were rescued by Noah. But Noah's Ark could only carry thousands of species at the most, not the millions that we find on a planet today. The solution is that the word kind in Genesis does not mean species, but something similar to the biologist's genus, a group that may contain hundreds of similar species. That is, God created animals and plants with the potential to form new related species, though within the constraints of their own kind. This process would have to occur very quickly, and having done so, there would be no need to continue diversifying, so the creatures today produce young who are always of the same species. For example, the genus Felidae includes lions, cheetahs and domestic cats. So Noah would not need to take on board all these species, but just a pair of one of them. For his sake, I hope that the ancestral kind of Felidae was something like a domestic cat. Similarly, he would only need to take one pair of toads and one pair of bears, because after the flood they would produce natachak toads, giant cane toads, brown bears, polar bears, and about 160 more species of toads and bears that exist today. So, surprisingly, all Christians agree that new species can develop over time. The main differences concern the speed and the process by which these changes occur. Everyone also accepts that genetic changes are still happening. We know that modern wheats are nothing like the grass plants they were bred from. And farmers are aware that selecting seeds from the strongest plants each year will gradually produce a superior crop next year. Similarly, everyone can understand that modern antelopes are fast because they are all descended from those antelopes that didn't fall behind in the chase and get eaten. The core dispute is not about whether species can change, but how fast and by what mechanism. If the process took billions of years, the mechanism can be random mutation, the same process by which new forms of wheat have developed. But if the process was completed in a few centuries following Noah's flood, then it used a far faster mechanism, which we cannot see anywhere now because it no longer occurs. Whether we believe in a young earth or an old earth, we can praise God for equipping living things with this built-in mechanism to produce new designs in response to new needs and opportunities. It's much more powerful and flexible than a fixed blueprint. The power of evolution has now been harnessed by building it into robot programming. Random changes are allowed to deliberately occur in their programming and those can be deleted if they're useless. Some such robots have even invented a simple language for speaking to each other. And the neural net behind Google Translate has invented its own intermediary language to help it understand human languages. Evolution is the most powerful design method available and we didn't invent it. It's a remarkable process invented by an awesome God, 
that enables life to constantly adapt to all the variety found in our world. And if God used that process to craft my body, then I'm proud to be a result of it. God bless.